Hi guys, and welcome to The Family Fudge. Today, I'm going to be sharing the story behind my Bunches of Lunches series. Recently, I put out a call for you guys to send in your questions, and boy, did you deliver. I think I received over 200 questions, and most of them were about lunches, so I'm gonna try my best to answer those today. So stay tuned. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some of the process behind planning for lunches, how I keep it all organized, and where I get my ideas from. But before I get started, make sure to hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already, and go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you're a fan of Bunches of Lunches. Now let's get started. Today's first question comes from Elise Wells. She wants to know, where did I get the idea to start Bunches of Lunches? Now that is a perfect question to start off with, so thank you, Elise. But basically, in a nutshell, the idea for Bunches of Lunches came from you guys. Now on this channel, I was already sharing lots of recipes and fun things to do with kids. So when you guys requested to see lunch videos, I said, sure, I can do that, and I did. But when I started making lunch videos, I had no idea that that was totally a thing on YouTube. And nowadays, lunch making videos are actually really popular. So popular, in fact, that I started putting my face on all of my thumbnails so you'd know exactly which videos were mine. Now, the next question I actually got from several people, including Andrevia and Jasmine, and they'd like to know where I get my inspiration from when I'm coming up with ideas for these lunches. And this might be a shocker to you, but you guys, I try my best not to look on Pinterest first. And that's because I try my best to come up with what I think are original ideas. But wouldn't you know what, every time I think I have a new idea, I can go to Pinterest and somebody, at least one person, is already doing it. But you know, I actually get a lot of inspiration from the traditional Japanese bentos. Now my lunches are not traditional by any means, but when I was in my 20s and in my teens, I spent a lot of time in Japan, and I fell in love with the whole idea of bento making. It's totally an art form in Japan. And I actually have my own little bento box collection while I live there. So I'm definitely inspired by the Japanese culture of lunch making. Now there is another way that I find a lot of inspiration for my lunches, and that's literally to walk up and down all of the aisles at the grocery store. And I actually visit different grocery stores to get different ideas. And you'd be surprised the kinds of things you can find to put into lunches. The next question is another good one. It comes from Jamila Frazier, and she'd like to know how much I spend on my accessories for lunches each month. And probably I don't spend as much as you might think. And here's why. First off, a lot of my things come from the Dollar Tree or Daiso, which is the Japanese version of the dollar store. So a lot of the items are only a dollar and I reuse those as much as I can. And you guys, I was super lucky that my sweet mother-in-law actually purchased a bunch of lunch making accessories for me for Christmas. So sandwich cutters and cookie cutters, stamps and things like that, she gifted to me at Christmas time. So I was really thankful for that. You guys, even my family knows how much I love and how passionate I am about these lunches. Now, there's even been a few times where companies have sent me products to try out, so those have been free as well. But on average, I probably spend at least $25 each month on accessories, except for my special themed videos. So if it's a holiday themed video or one of my Disney videos, I definitely have a bigger budget for those videos. I'd probably spend anywhere between I probably spend about $25 per video on those accessories, but I actually have a strategy, especially with the Disney videos. I put in extra effort and investment in those videos because I'm trying to get Disney's attention. There's a group of moms on social media that Disney calls their social media moms. And it's kind of a group of bloggers, influencers, YouTubers, and they get special inside information about Disney and the park. So someday, long story short, I'd love to be chosen as one of those moms. So I really think that through these Disney themed lunches that eventually someday they might pick me. Now just as a side note, you guys, I do have a separate video where I share all of the accessories that I have and I show you how I keep them organized and all of that. So if you'd like to check out that video, I'll link it down below. 
The next question comes from Dawn, but this is actually a question that I get a lot. And she'd like to know, how long does it take me to put the lunches together? Because yes, some of them are elaborate and they do look like they might take a long time. And sometimes they do, but I've made a few shortcuts and ways to cut down on the time and that's by pre-planning. So here's how I do it. I actually start on Sunday. Now to make this easier for myself, I made a couple of printables and they're both available on thefamilyfudge.com if you'd like to print them out. But the first one is sort of a menu. It has six different sections and when I'm coming up with the lunches, I try to pick one item from each section. So I have a main course, a fruit, a vegetable, a snack, and a treat, and then sometimes a drink other than water. So I keep that in mind while I'm planning, it makes it a lot easier. And the next one is a calendar. So once I've decided what I'm going to put in the lunches, I write it on the calendar, and then every morning I can very quickly put it together because I already know what's gonna go in the lunch. I'm not guessing in the morning. And now I have some super secret insider information because when it comes to the special lunches that I make, especially the Disney lunches, I actually take it a step further in the planning process. What I like to do is spread out baskets. I have these baskets from the Dollar Tree and I assign each basket a day, so Monday through Friday. And then I'll actually put in each basket all of the non-perishable items, all of the napkins, all of the special picks and accessories that I'm going to use for that lunch on that day and I'll go ahead and get all of that ready. So in the morning, I just pull out that basket, it has everything I'm going to use except what's in the fridge, and that really cuts down on the time of building the lunches. Now certainly, if I wasn't filming the lunches, I could probably throw them together in about 10 minutes, but definitely when I'm moving the camera around, trying to get different angles, and I'm also concerned about how it looks, I try to make it look visually appealing, that definitely takes extra time. So at least 30 minutes in the morning. Sometimes I even make the lunches the night before and that saves time too. And this is definitely one that I get asked all the time in almost every single video. And that is, why are you making school lunches if you're homeschoolers? Now in case you didn't know, we are homeschoolers. Right now I have a third grader, a kindergartner, a preschooler, and a toddler who doesn't do any school. But you guys, we kind of have a unique setup. We actually belong to a homeschool charter. So what that means is one day a week, my kids actually get to attend a public school campus and have that experience. And then the rest of the days are either at home with me or they're at gymnastics or different activities, co-ops and group activities. So I usually pack them a lunch because they're going to an activity or they're going to their public school day. So hopefully with this system, they're getting the benefit of being homeschooled and the benefit of attending a public school one day a week and all the other activities that come along with that. So hopefully it's good for them. I think so far, so good when it comes to the homeschooling. So. So I still make them lunches because they take them with them where they're going and they really like it and I enjoy it as well. Next up, I have another really good question, but unfortunately, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce your name. I think it's Cattle Cattle, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below and I apologize. But her question is, how do you feel about constantly preparing delicious food for your family? So first off, thank you for the compliment, but I have to be honest, my food is not always delicious. There are, there are some times where my kids refuse to eat it because they don't like it. Or there are some times where I might even burn it because I've forgotten about it and walked out of the kitchen. So it happens. And on those days, I don't really enjoy making food all the time. But most of the time, I enjoy it. But here's my secret, you guys. I don't usually show what I make my kids on the weekends because on the weekends, I don't really cook that much. I take the weekend off they eat something easy, or they eat leftovers, or we eat out. So that's kind of how I balance it. I make the fun lunches and the fun breakfast during the week, and on the weekend, I take it easy. Okay friends, before I wrap up this video, I have a request of you. I would like to come up with a fun name that I can call you guys. So instead of starting off every video by saying, hey guys, I could say, hey, and then your special name. Do you know what I mean? So if you have a special name in mind, for fans of the show or fans of the Family Fudge, let me know what it is and we can have a vote on it. Because I'd love to have a special name to call you guys other than hey or friends or something like that. 
So let me know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.